Can you break a lease when buying a house? This is a question I get all the time. And timing a lease ending date and a home purchase perfectly, it's tough. It's actually really tough in this market. You really need to start the process early. So what are your options? Hey, it's Jeff Chubb and welcome to the channel. To learn more about real estate, then don't forget to click the subscribe and like button right below. And if you want to talk real estate mono e mono, then find my information in the description below as well. So the first question I generally get in this situation is, can I break my lease if I buy a new house? Now look, every lease is different, but I have not seen too many leases that really give you an easy no penalty out. So generally speaking, the answer here is no. That is unless you get permission from your landlord. Now, breaking lease laws differ by state, so the options and the consequences may look different depending on where you live. Even if you can't legally end a lease, there may be a few other methods that could get you out of your lease. Honesty is the best policy here. And that is also the case when it comes to buying a house. Now, the first thing you want to do is let your landlord or property manager know that, well, you're looking for a new home. Now, larger buildings will generally have policies that relate to breaking a lease, while smaller landlords, they might just ask you to work with them in the process. Heck, if you're paying below market rent, then that landlord actually may be really excited to get you the apartment back and re-rent it. So the first thing you'll want to do is look for a home buying clause in your lease. Now, very few leases have these, but you may be one of those lucky few. If your lease includes a home buying clause, this means that you can terminate your lease early if you've bought a new home. This is provided that you give your landlord proper notice and proper notice is in that lease. If you don't have a home buying clause, then you can try to buy your way out. Your lease may say that you can terminate your lease by paying an early termination fee. The cost of this fee, it can vary based on the terms laid out in that lease. Now, generally speaking, you can expect to pay a minimum of one to two months rent as a penalty for breaking this lease. Now, remember that even with this clause, you still need to give proper notice. You can't just move out and say, hey, I'm breaking my lease. Here's the keys. Here's the fee. You're most likely going to end up in court and be forced to pay for the remaining months of your lease. Now, another option when talking with your landlord is asking them about finding another acceptable tenant to take over the terms of your lease or for them to sign a new long term lease. Many times a tenant will guarantee that the new tenant will pay at least what they are currently paying. Otherwise, they'd be willing to make up the difference. Now, tenants oftentimes will also promise to incur all their costs associated with finding that new tenant. The idea with this option is trying to make it as seamless and risk-free as possible for the landlord. So, well, ultimately they're more agreeable. Now, I know something that we always offer in this situation for our buyers is that we'll actually help find a new tenant for the property at no cost to the landlord or our client. It also helps ensure that you actually know someone's putting in a lot of effort trying to find your replacement and thereby limiting your overall exposure. Now, if you know buying a home is on the list of things to do in the next year and your lease renewal date is coming up, then this is when you may want to bring up to your landlord and see if they'd be willing to switch your lease terms to a month-to-month -month lease rather than the year-long lease. Maybe add a 60-day notice to entice them. This takes a lot of advanced preparation, but could be a huge plus if you're a good planner. Now, one last trick in the bag is an accounting trick, if you will. When you pay rent, you pay for the month that you are about to use, okay? When you own a home, you pay for the month that you just used. So let's say it's March 1st. If you're a renter, then you are paying your payment for the time you're about to use month of March. Now, if you're a homeowner, then you actually just paid for the time that you used in February. So where's this accounting trick that I'm talking about and how is this helpful? Let's say your lease is up in August. What this means is that you can close any time in July and your first mortgage payment will actually be September 1st. What this really means is that you would not end up paying double with a rent and mortgage payment. This essentially just buys you a little more time. So let's say you find your dream home on April 1st. Now, on average, it takes about 45 days to close in Massachusetts on a property. So that means that a normal closing date would be the middle of June. In this case, what we try to do is negotiate an extended closing date to June 1st. And this would mean you have two months to do some improvements to your new home and maybe move in nice and slowly and casually, all while not having to pay two housing payments. Now, the negative of this scenario, you do end up having a little bit higher closing costs as there's going to be a little bit more prepaid interest that you're going to owe when you purchase the property. There you have it. 
Those are your options. You want to give yourself some time. You want to be upfront and transparent with your landlord about your goals and find out your options and what they would be willing to do. Now, if you're thinking about breaking your lease, then most likely you want to know more about the home buying process. If that is the case, then this video on the screen right now will break down all the different steps of the home buying process and the other video will actually go over the numbers on, well, why you're an idiot if you don't buy a house. Thanks for watching.